Welcome everyone to the Wordsmith UPSC channel. In this course, we are covering entire ethics in 11 hours and it is absolutely free. Please subscribe and join the Telegram channels for regular updates and getting feedback on your answers, which is very important for your growth and enhancing your answer writing skills. This new lecture, which is about public, public civil services values and ethics in public administration. So this uh, lecture and this discussion will help you in understanding the ethics side of the public administration and its status and problems, ethical concerns and dilemmas in government and private institutions, ethical issues in international relations and funding and corporate governance. So, so this is a bit of a lengthy lecture, but it will cover important topics which are generally ignored in coaching institutes, which are not easily available. And I will help you in understanding these topics in a very simple language. And we and you will be able to grasp the basic concept of it, right? Uh, after that, you can always analyze it and you can solve questions to understand that. But this is the basic crux of everything which I am going to tell you, right? So this is about ethics in public administration, which means what is the right thing to do? Ethics, which means right thing to do. And in public administration, which means that in your responsibility as an administrator for the public, right? And uh, this course captures the crux of what is what it is about ethics in public administration. As human beings, our greatness lies not so much in being able to remake the world so that we do not have to redesign the world. That is the myth of the atomic age. It is a myth. It is an idealistic idea that we can redesign the world and then it will be great as in much being able to remake ourselves. But we all have to remake ourselves. We all have to follow the path of ethics. We all have to follow ethics. We all have to follow the honesty, integrity, and then we will be able to remake the world. We cannot achieve greatness by remaking the world, but we have to remake ourselves, right? It is as it in another form, Mahatma Gandhi has said that, that if you want to change the world, first change yourself, right? It is, the, it is, it is coming from the same thing. But why ethics in public administration is required? This is the important concept that why it is required that ethics is part of the public administration, right? Why, why you have to follow ethics in public administration and why public administrators should be having knowledge about ethics because there is a perception that public services have remained largely exempt from the imposition of penalties due to the complicated procedures that have arisen out of the constitutional guarantee against arbitrary and vindictive action. So this is talking about article 311 and article 310, right? And second ARC has recommended that these articles should be abolished and a simple a law should be passed which provides for the security of the honest pub public servants, but it should not be a constitutional guarantee. So this is also from second ARC and it is and it is a perception that public services has remained because because public servants are exempted from penalties because of the uh, guarantee under 311 and 310. So the corruption, they have involved themselves in corruption because the risk is very low, right? Governance is the weakest link in our quest for prosperity and equity, right? So basically, if a country wants to prosper and wants to achieve equity, then governance should be efficient, economic and honest. But it is a weak link in our, uh, it is the, it is the governance is the weak link in our prosperity, in our road to prosperity, in our target to achieve prosperity. And that is why we need ethics in public administration. Improved governance in the form of contract enforcement and decrease in bureaucratic delays and corruption can raise the GDP growth rate significantly. So as you know that there are delays, there is there's policy paralysis, there is rate tapism and all these things have led to the poor GDP growth. More and more people are trapped in the poverty cycle, right? So these all, all this all is attributed to weak governance and non-ethical governance, right? So that is why we need ethical governance. We need ethical governance. We need ethics in public administration there's a perception has been exempt from the input penal penalties right against arbitrary and vindictive actions so this is again uh, important point which is repeated now how to promote ethics in public administration this is again as per the formula like what we need you need laws you need institutions you need social and personal personal measures to bring about the attitudinal change and then you need international framework. So whenever uh, suggestions are asked and on how to bring about changes, 
then these are the four things these are the four points you should mention so that your answer is very good very nicely structured and it looks good and you can you and you will be able to think very fast if you have these things in mind so laws how to eth ethics basically what is the right thing to do so basically you need laws rules regulation example rti act now you it the act promotes transparency the act promotes accountability now the officer who is signing a contract is thinking that he should sign it with uh, as per rules right although it has negative impact but it is the it is important that honest officer should be uh, prevented from unnecessary harassment but at the same time you should have laws like rti which include which enhance that transparency similarly code of conduct should be there right code of ethics should be there so all these things are should be there to promote uh, ethics in public administration institutional factors and so these are the recommendations by second ARC an office of ethics commissioner may be constituted by each house of the parliament a local body's ombudsman should be constituted for a group of district to investigate cases against the functionaries of the local body so this will not this will in, enhance the uh, enhance ethics not only in parliament but also at the local level so ethics is public administration is not just about bureaucracy it includes parliamentary uh, it includes um, member of parliament it includes local bodies right so everything is included then there is social and personal right which includes attitude change which includes perception change which includes the involvement of your conscience which includes involvement of your consciousness so that you are not involved in such activities because laws and rules cannot be, cannot apply in every situation you will have various situations where you have to act with a sense of responsibility and for that you include you need formal education family values religion and media so these are the two recommendations by second arc in this in this scenario that citizens may be involved in the assessment and maintenance of ethics in important government institutions and offices such as panchayati raj institutions right government agencies can help the media and fight against corruption by discrediting or corruption cases regularly this this include transparency this include transparency measures right and then international framework un framework of corruption why this is necessary because corruption can uh, corruption requires uh, corruption requires coordination across nations and for that a na international framework is necessary such as un framework on corruption right so in this is the way in which you can promote ethics in public administration it includes four basic pillars laws institutions social and personal changes and international framework whenever you are writing any answer on how to promote anything this 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 these are the four this is the basic principle you can write now next topic is public serve public oblique civil services values so what does this mean this means that what are the values which you should have when you are dealing with public civil services right so what are the values so i have classified these values into four uh, into four categories first is ethical second is democratic third is professional and fourth is social this is just the nomenclature for our convenience but it may not be it is not essential that you also write these nomenclatures right this is just for your understanding so what are the values integrity honesty fairness respect rule of law neutrality accountability transparency objectivity economical tolerance courage compassion and all these are important public civil services value which you which you should have which one should have right these seven values were prescribed by nolan committee and are basic minimum basic minimum civil services values which should be there which is honesty objectivity accountability leadership transparency integrity and selflessness right so you can you can have a acronym for that h o l a i i t s hola i t s right hola i t s this can be your acronym for the nolan committee so we will look at these values one by one so this is the next topic which is status and problem of uh, public administration so if you see public governance and public administration it can be measured through corruption 
right if corruption is high in a in in a in, in a country if corruption is high in government institutions it means there are issues with issues related to public administration there are issues related to good governance right so as per the corruption perception index india ranks 85 out of 180 countries 2022 okay and if it is zero it is bad if it is 100 it is good right so score is 40 out of 100 the user uses a scale from 0 to 100 so this is the uh, diagram which you can which can be used when you are explaining any question of corruption perception index or when you are when you are answering any question related to corruption you should use these type of diagram again in the good governance index india's ranking reveals a downshift in the uh, good governance index 2023 as the country slipped to 57th position indicating a decline of five places as compared to last year so this is this is important that india's uh, position in good governance index has decreased so these can be used as an indicator to show that yes it is a problem then why it is a problem is a different this thing how it can be improved we have seen but this is a problem it can be shown by these uh, two uh, indices right and this can be used in introduction also now what is the problems right problems which are there as we have seen that there is an issue that is why we are lagging behind in good governance index in the uh, corruption perception index so to analyze the problems analyze what constitute good governance so what will constitute good governance when public service values are followed when all these values are followed when all these values are implemented practically then we will see then we will say that yes there is a good governance but at the same time you have to see that good governance constitutes many other things such as rule of law so how to analyze that rule of law a rule of law will be followed where districts under red corridor have decreased a total of over 58 lakh crimes were registered comprising both the indian penal code and special and local laws the registration of cases witnessed a 4.5 decline compared to 2021 cyber crime reporting has surged so these for example if something is asked related to good governance something is asked related to public administrators administration and the status of it you have to analyze on the basis of facts always keep this in mind that you have to you need to know some basic facts right so for example here i am just analyzing one part of it that is rule of law when you have written at least one of these points then you can find the reasons so these are the sample reasons which i have mentioned poor infrastructure for police forces law is not clear which which leads to delays judicial machinery take time which leads to lower rate of prosecution right so all these are the problems and how you have to analyze these problems because they will not ask about uh, in general problems they will ask about one specific problem and you have to write this right there is a lack of accountability in our system there is uh, transparency issues are there right integrity and honesty issues are there so and all these things you have to write now we come to this new topic which is crisis of conscience and and conflict of interest so these are the two important topics these are two often confusing terms and people get confused about it but it is very simple to differentiate them and uh, let us have a look at them so broadly these are circumstances which are often overlapping that produce ethical dilemmas so what is my mean by overlapping it means that it is not that these two are very much segregated and exclusive but these are overlapping so this is conflict of interest and this is crisis of conscience so it may happen that both are overlapping in many of the situations and both of these situations and both of these situations create ethical dilemmas in the life of civil servants and in human beings so what is mean by crisis of conscience crisis of conscience is a situation in which intellect is not able to pass judgment on what is right thing to do so the important thing is intellect intellect means a rational thing a rational thinking of mind so it is not about it is not about emotions it is about the rational thinking also emotions will be part of it will some have some stake in intellect 
but it is not just about emotions right so it is a rational decision when a, when you cannot reach a rational decision about a situation that what you need to do and what is the right thing to do in such a situation then it is called crisis of conscience right conflict of interest refers to a situation when an individual is not able to take a ideal decision because he himself will be impacted by the same decision so by the same decision so this is the main difference between crisis of conscience and conflict of interest that in conflict of interest the individual will also be impacted this is the difference right in both the situations you are not able to reach a decision you are not able to reach a particular ideal decision but in both the situation the, the manner in which it is impacting you is different in one case conflict of interest the decision will impact you that is why there is a conflict of interest and in crisis of conscience due it may or may not impact you and that is why there is a crisis of conscience because there are two alternatives which may both be right which may both be true and you have to choose one right so how this how this how how is this seen in practical life for example public servant in charge of giving out contract will face conflict of interest if his son has applied for it so right for example if your son has applied for a contract and you are providing that contract there will be conflict of interest right because you want your son to be happy in your in in, in his personal life you want your son to get the contracts right but on the other hand you are providing that contract it will not be objective on your part to provide that yeah so you will be impacted similarly if you are taking an interview and your son is part of it right what will you do that is a there is a conflict of interest there is an ethical dilemma there ethical dilemma means when you are not able to decide what is the right thing to do what right when you are not able to decide the right path to take that is called ethical dilemma and it is due to two situations which we have termed as conflict of interest and crisis of conscience and crisis of conscience can be seen right when migrant workers break the rule of lockdown in the wake of a pandemic to reach his or her hometown on foot while the breach of rules calls for punishment there arises a dilemma of punishing a human being who has already been deprived of the basic amenity so let's say if you are a police personnel on a personal level you will want that this person should reach and there is compassion towards that person but on the other hand there are rules to be followed there is duty to be done so this is crisis of conscience right then what the police personnel is going through is crisis of concern and you are not able to reach a particular decision because both the options seems equally right and equally wrong right so uh, these are the situations and how you have to come out of that situation that is depends a lot on your personality a lot on the gravity of the situation right for example due this is during the civil disobedience movement civil disobedience movement there were indian troops who refused to fire on the protesters because they thought that this is not the right thing to do and gorkha regiment refused to fight refused to fire on the uh, protesters on the protesters and on the satyagrahis right similarly this is from the movie snowden so snowden lead the uh, snowden lead the information but he said he is doing that for national uh, interest right because this, uh, there were issues of privacy violation by the government and thus he was against the law that he he went against the law to safeguard the larger public interest so he followed the principle of utilitarianism that is maximizing the good for the largest number of people so he must be having crisis of conscience and conflict of interest because conflict of interest because he himself will be impacted by it right he may face uh, jail he has to go to russia right then uh, similarly the gorkha the troops who refuse to fire may have to face punishment right similarly in the police you are going through cases of concern but you will also be impacted by it right so there is a conflict also so it is on often overlapping situations but at sometimes it will just be separate right now ethical concerns and dilemmas ethical dilemma can be defined as a choice between competing principles where satisfying one would lead to compromise of other as i said it was compassion versus rule of 
law it was privacy of individuals versus national interests in case of snowden right so these are the situations where there is a choice uh, there are two principle which and we say it a dilemma because satisfying one would lead to compromise of the other this is an important part of it and thus we have to highlight this part of it right so basically a dilemma has three basic features that is availability of more than one course of action there will be for example a policeman may arrest him the migrant worker police may allow him to pass police may uh, detain him for some time and then let him go police may send them back so there are many course of action which are available in that particular situation right and there is a necessity to make a choice now you have to make a choice if it can be that no you don't have to make a choice in that case then it is not an ethical dilemma if you can resolve the ethical dilemma by not doing anything then that is not an ethical dilemma compromise of some principle or value in any choice is made so right these three are the important features which are which you will find in an ethical dilemma so as you can see in all the examples these features are there a dilemma is in its true form is not a choice between right and wrong such a choice is only a problem which can be resolved by honesty and conviction right so the, as i said it is not about right and wrong it is about choosing between two right things a perfect resolution is not possible therefore the dilemma is likely to produce inner turmoil and dissonance especially among those with a high sense of moral morality and ethical literacy so a perfect resolution of uh, ethical dilemma is often not possible because you have to choose between two competing principles two right things you have to choose and it will create guilt it will create uh, uh, it will create a dissonance in you and the only thing is that you have to choose what is right for you at that principle if you weigh that following rule of law is a high higher virtue then you have to stop that part uh, stop that migrant worker but if you choose that no compassion is higher if he is a poor person he is there you can see that then it is for you, it is the right thing for you to do that you allow him to pass and then face the consequences of it in both the cases you have to face the consequences in one it may be external and internal in may one it may be just internal for example if you let him pass then you are internally satisfied you may face external uh, pro external punishment from the department right but in case you arrest him and you do not let him pass you may not face external punishment but you may face internal turmoil like guilt right so this is the thing so now what are the different ways in which uh, in which it, what are the different ways in which ethical dilemmas manifest themselves it means that in what ways ethical dilemmas will be presented and why they come into our uh, life why you feel why you have to face ethical dilemmas right so it can be a situation where individual is trapped between two competing values example development versus environment for example you have to design a you have to design a dam now you know that a forest will be submerged and you are an environmentalist so you and as an officer as a development officer you have to promote the building of the dam so these are the two uh, right competing values the development versus environment similarly for snowden it was about privacy of individual versus organizational values so there you you may find yourself between you know choosing one value over other value then individual sense of morality is different from collective morality right so for example you are a peace living person you practice buddhism but at the same time you are in police then you have to torture a ter terrorist but against you but you as a principal you are against violence now what will you do then there is the dilemma that your individual sense is different from collective morality collective morality will say that yes it is right thing to torture a terrorist because he may provide information but for you it is not then it is also an ethical dilemma right in this situation you are not part of the your values are not there it may be some different values but you have to choose for example development versus environment you may not be you may not be personally impacted by anything but here you are you have yourself on the stake right your values are also at the stake 
conflicting organizations a public servant may be associated with organizations like ngo which have conflicting values for example if you are associated with a uh, if you are associated with an ngo which is uh, which is working for ocean which is working for ocean uh, cleaning but at the same time you are also head of iocl and they are they are drilling oil from the oceans so it may happen it may happen that you have conflicting organizations in in that in you you cannot escape that right you cannot escape that because it because you have a sense of responsibility that as an officer i have to work wherever i am allocated and as an officer it is my duty that iocl works efficiently and at the same time you have the you are part of that ngo who is working for the ocean bed who is working for the ocean fishes fishes right then conflicting roles if any additional charges example tribal versus economic development charge for example at the same times you are uh, you, uh, you are secretary of the tribal uh, ministry and also the secretary of mining right so it may happen that you have to promote both these uh, you have to promote both these uh, both these uh, fields and you often find it very conflicting right now ethical dilemmas in private institutions so how private institutions so how private institutions are different from government organizations or uh, from ethical dilemmas faced by a civil servant so civil servant generally face ethical dilemmas in these five situations right but for private individuals and pro private institutions one more factor is there which is profit so in government you are looking at the ethicality and legality of any issue but in private sector you are looking at ethicality legality and profitability so it is bit more complex and you have to find a balance between these three things so your bandwidth to choose the right thing is little less in private institutions if you are working in a psu for instance for example i gave you an example that you are working for an org ngo who is working for uh, ocean bed cleaning or for ocean preservation and also in the iocl and then you have to find the right choice right you have to find where both are so you may you may ask them or you may ask that organization take proper security concerns proper cleaning mechanisms are there right you can ask that okay if in anything is there they work they donate something from their organization for the ocean cleanup right but at the same time in private institutions you have to see the profitability part of it so you cannot have access fund to uh, you cannot spend too much fund on the ocean cleaning part if you are an oil mining company right so that is the case in private institutions that that is why it is more complex and this is what is written here the issue is that in private it is difficult to satisfy all the three values examples in private that legal ethical and profitable so if we are balancing all those things then it may not be how this is an ethical dilemma this is these are the examples of ethical dilemmas so if anything is legal ethical but is not profitable it is c it is csr charity donation right so it is not profitable but it is legal and it is ethical similarly one is legal and profitable but is not ethical surrogate advertisement paid news glass ceiling it is profitable you have to pay less it is legal also because there is no law to which says that you have to pay women women equally right or something like that and at the same time but it is not ethical ethical is there profitable but it is not legal product recall right so so basically it means that when a company is not recalling its product right so it may have a minor defect and they they, they and they are saying that okay it's fine that we we may continue with this product then it is ethical because it is not harming anyone it is profitable but it is not legal because it they have to to recall the product so you can use these examples while writing your answers and believe me you have to include these examples while writing your answers i cannot emphasize further more on this because you have to write examples you have to make such diagrams right you have to make such diagrams and when that will only that will only make your answer look different that will only give you that extra edge which is not there for other students right and uh, keep writing these examples and also relate your whatever you are reading also relate to what you have read in the class right uh, if you are not able to relate 
anything which is happening in the current affairs with the static part of it then it is of no use now we come to the new topic which is corporate governance right so basically we have seen that what is governance now we are looking at the part of it which is corporate governance basically how corporate is governed right so as you as i said that in corporate there are profit is the main motive for corporate governance but at the same times we have different stakeholders which are there right society is there for example if if you have any if you are using any product of xyz company then you are part you are then you are also a stakeholder because you will be impacted by the decisions taken at the corporate level then shareholders the company uh, shareholders because they will be impacted by the dividends which the company is giving and the the price of the shares then the management is there customers suppliers government because because government is the regulating authority and if it is not able to correctly regulate the corporate then it is off then it is seen in the bad light similarly financiers because they have their money uh, invested in the companies and if it is and if if there is a systematic flaw in the country for example in the audits then it is bad for everyone right financiers to society and everything because society is also having employment because of good functioning corporates right so what is corporate governance a set of rules practices processes under which a company is regulated and controlled right so corporate governance include all the rules which are made by the company which are made by the government which practices which are there the judicial announcements which are there just like normal governance where all the main resources of the country are uh, utilized there is corporate governance right where rules practices processes is used to regulate so why it is required why corporate governance is required in today's times right because private sector participation is increasing regularly and at a constant level so private sector is coming in every field in every part of the society private sector is now a stakeholder so we need stability and we need proper governance mechanism we need proper laws to regulate the private sector globalization is happening india's india need capital to grow right ill governed companies doesn't attract capital pnb shares doomed after stock market crash right so these are the things which is uh, which are there that for capital you need private sector for good private set for good investment in private sectors in various sectors like make in india and all those schemes you need better regulating facilities increasing retail participation in stock market when uh, when will i uh, invest in stock market when i know that it is fair when i know that if if a company is showing xyz profit it is true what will happen that if i come to know that the company the profit uh, booked by company are not true right then and and in in later years my money is just drained down right then it will not be a good thing and it will not inspire confidence in people so i have to make sure so it it, it is necessary that retail participation increase in the market and thus to make it less risky you need better corporate governance right so it is important for everyone and uh, that is why we need a corporate governance that is rules practices processes for regulation and control however it is seen that in many cases these principles these processes and rules are not followed and it leads to many issues in corporate governance so indian uh, indian uh, scene is such that it, it it is still it is growing and it is getting better but it's still not as such there right so what are the issues like management board and auditor nexus help to evade taxes right example satyam scam so in general it is seen that management board and auditors so there are independent auditors but the auditors are paid by the management board and thus it is seen that they file they file wrong reports and it lead to wrong results and it leads to wrong share of prices and later when the uh, when this is exposed 
it leads to downfall right example in the case of satyam scam insider trading although there is a law in india now but despite that ins insider trading is 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 there and is happening and as you must have seen in the uh, in the harshad mehta case right at, at that time there was no law but it's despite that insider trading is happening there are no stringent uh, principles there are no stringent ethical uh, principles which are there followed and it happens in the rajat gupta case right then there are issues of shell companies and you know ministry of corporate affairs says that 33% of the registered companies are inactive and there are ponzi schemes which are run by them they evade taxes using shell companies and it leads to loss of uh, taxes for the government and welfare schemes also but also it 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 increases the it enhances the work of tax authorities and it leads to very mismanaged corporate scene and then there is, then there is gender inequality you can see glass ceiling safety of women employees all those issues are there casual sexism is always there and these are the issues which needs to be which which needs to be balanced out which needs to be resolved to make a good corporate governance model in india apart from that labor participation in decision making is very poor right example in the maruti suzuki case and you see that these are these are required these are required to have a proliferating business and profits for the company also and for the labor also but it is not there so we need to resolve these issues through laws processes and practices unhealthy products for profit example msg in maggi was found and there are so many cases see limited the, the authorities have limited capacity right fssai cannot cannot uh, uh, you know cannot regulate every each and every product although they are trying but it has to come from the corporate side that they adhere to the law they adhere to the values which are there latent advertisement is uh, notebook to school students with company stickers and where for example in csr if you are providing notebooks to students and these are five page notebooks but with a big brand of theirs so this is latent advertisement and this is very wrong these are the ethical issues okay these are the issues which are there cat cartel formation inhibits competition right cci although is the regulatory body but you can have you can see that there are only two or how many telecom companies were there but now only two major telecom companies are there and they are regulating prices at their own wish so all these issues are there and all those ethical issues needs to be resolved by not by not only government side but also from the corporate side right so now what are the principles of corporate governance so it means basically the rules regulations and the frameworks and practices on what principles they should be founded so first is supervisory framework as i said that or uh, there are issues of auditors and management board nexus so it will be solved by the supervisory framework so proper promote fair and transport transparent markets and should be consistent with the rule of law sebi guidelines so when will be the markets fair and transparent when the results are out in and the actual results are out there is no inflate there is no inflation in the results or deflation in the results for example if you have profit of 200 crores you should show it 200 crores you cannot show it 400 crores and inflate your results and then you get higher share price for your shares right or you get extra funding based on that profit so that is all supervisory framework and it should be fair and transparent and it will be done by corporate only right then shareholder rights so firstly every shareholder has some right for example voting rights are there sometimes what happens is some companies are giving some rights to only large shareholders and some rights to small shareholders that is fine that is not an issue but certain basic rights every shareholder should have and which includes secure method of ownership if i am having your shares it should not be that they are not recognized by you 
right there should be proper mechanism to recognize them then you need to have transfer mechanism how will you transfer the shares right if i need to share my trans transfer my shares today the registration fee should be less it should be made without too much uh, formalities right i should be having re relevant information on the corporation in a timely manner you should send it me through messages why are the decisions of corporate not sent through messages right if you have if you see adani they are sending their information about the voting through messages to every one of its shareholder then there are institutional investors all shareholders of the same class should be treated equally as i said that all it may happen that some shareholders have some rights while the small shareholders do not have those rights but it is fine but all the big shareholders have same should have same rights and there should be prohibition on insider trading this will only be this is only possible from the corporate side then there should be transparency and disclosure not just results but also the developments that impact the operations for example generally what happens is that corporates announce their yearly results or quarterly results and not the operations for example if i am enhancing my capacity by 200 2000 tons then it should also be announced it is not that it should just be reflected at the end of the year it should be a continuous process now let us come to this new topic which is ethical issues in international relations what does ethical issues in international relation mean it means that what are the problems what are the problems from the prism of right or wrong what are the wrong things what are the issues what are the challenges which are not which are not right right what are the challenges which we can say through the prism of right and wrong that these are the activities these are the processes these are the funding patterns which are not right in international relations which are not right by the principle of justice equality equity historical responsibility and all those principles when applied to any activity any process any organization what are the issues which are coming out of it first is refugee crisis and this is the famous image of Alan Kurdi so basically what happened is that the, he was a migrant and he was a refugee and he was trying to cross the sea but he died in the process and this was the image which kept captured the attention of entire world and entire europe and this led to the opening of the doors for the refugees so uh, in the refugee crisis you must have read in your uh, in your international relations that there is an issue where some countries are not willing to accept refugees from the war torn countries for so what is the ethics of it so basically the ethics says that when the whole world is responsible for a war in that country why it is not that the world is ready to accept the responsibility for the refugees and also the ethics says that because 
as per the principle of utilitarianism it will be beneficial for the entire world if there is peace and there is prosperity because businesses will flourish there will be peace and there will be harmony in the world and which will not only benefit that country but also other countries also on the other hand there are countries which are opposing this that they cannot take the refugees uh, in an unlimited number they are they are citing the lifeboat ethics example which says that the capacity of a country is very limited and they have a responsibility to first to safeguard their citizens and provide a and provide a good lifestyle to their citizens then only they can accept the refugees but on the other hand if you see from the utilitarianism then it is if a peace if there are there is peace in the entire world it will be useful for every every individual in every country but on the other hand if you see it from an approach of deontology then you may say that human is human beyond nationality for because you have to take refugees because taking refugees is a good is a good activity it shows compassion and you have to take refugees for the sake of taking them in this you can write that this is the responsibility of the countries which are prosperous to give sanction to to give to give opportunities to everyone also in the long term the united nations should try that such a situation do not come into picture in any country so this is about refugee crisis then the other ethical issue is legitimacy of international institutions if you see through the principle of representation unsc and in in un there is hegemony of western countries especially us uk france italy and countries like that right so it includes like giving conditional loans that if if we will give you loan only imf will give you loan only if you liberalize your economy similarly for world bank and there is issue where they say that we will not uh, we will not give loans if it is for the mining of coal but at the same time in developing countries today most of the power generation is from coal but in now because european countries have switched to solar energy and wind energy they are not give they are against giving loans for uh, producing power through these thermal sources which is again not right as per the developing countries and these are the issues in international relations right then there are sovereignty issues for example state sponsored terrorism it is a wrong thing to do on part of a nation the water disputes are there land disputes are there with pok and cpec so basically sovereignty issues means that once we have once we have identified boundaries of the modern nation states it is not right it is not right to infiltrate that boundary and occupy others land right and these issues are there and these issues are not being solved by mutual recognition by mutual uh, uh, deliberations but these but there is use of army and a lot of resources are being utilized in that so what is the issue the issue is that when you are utilizing a lot of resources in the protection of the boundary in army you have very you you know you have very less resources spare for public welfare and social welfare and a lot of poor people are dying because of hunger because of diseases but you have to maintain a secure uh, Uh, but you have to maintain security at your borders and that is an ethical issue similarly for sustainable development goals there is no concept of historical responsibility there is no method to uh, measure carbon credit so all these are not right things to do from the prism of justice from the prism of utilitarianism which says that there it should maximize the benefit if there is no boundary dispute it will maximize the benefit in terms of welfare of the people for both the countries but it is not there right there is violence going on so uh, deontology will say that violence in its own on its own is wrong it should not be there then there are international blockades blockades and sanctions then there are non citizens right in saudi arabia non citizens have very poor rights protection and this is against and this is against equality right this is not justice so these principles are not followed in international relations and that is why these are ethical issues right global crime again non state actors states actors are sponsoring non state actors to commit crimes from their lands and that is so unethical from every approach you know it violates the right of the people it is against maximizing good it is against it 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 is wrong on its own right it violates the 
डिग्निटी ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल इन द कंट्री इट इज नॉट दैट यू जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज द इशू बट वाई इट इज रॉन्ग फ्रॉम एवरी अप्रोच यू वर यू शुड बी एबल टू जस्टिफाई दैट दिस इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सो वॉट आर नाउ वी कम टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक विच इज स्पेशली रिलेटेड टू इंटरनेशनल फंडिंग बिकॉज इन इन द पास्ट ऑल्सो एंड इन प्रेजेंट टाइम्स वी सी दैट द फंडिंग इज अ मेजर सोर्स टू डिस्टेबलाइज एनी इकोनॉमी to destabilize any country so the first first issue is that when any organization is providing funding it erodes the sovereignty because it puts conditions it puts many terms that you have to abide by these terms and condition otherwise we will not provide funding so it is there is no choice in it so absence of choice makes the act unethical right there are ethical issues because there is no choice involved in it right for example imf bail out in 1991 right secondly there is philanthropic colonialism for example foreign funding is used as a tool to exert influence for example if you ch- see china and maldives if you see china and sri lanka bangladesh they are funding projects but at the same time at a very high interest rate so the benefits of the project if you compare with the debt of the country it is bringing is very less right religious conversions when funds are used and when funds are diverted to make mass conversions right example zakir naik is undergoing investigation in the wake of huge funding by arab nations so zakir naik is going under investigation in india so these are this is not the right issue because it again violates the rights provided by the constitutions it means that you are making fool of a population who may due to various reasons is not that illiterate that literate is not that rational so you are basically mind washing them right there is no active choice of citizens as such who are being converted that is why it is wrong to carry out religious conversion and when international funding is pro- being provided then it is then then there are ethical issues involved it so you have to analyze these issues from the perspective of various approaches and why it is wrong why which principles are it violating what is it bringing good to the society is it bringing good to the citizens of the country no it is not bringing good so that is why these are ethical issues now encourage separatist flame so as as i said ma- many times the non state actors are being funded by uh, some states and they are and and they and the fund is used for violence for disturbing peace for bringing divide or gl- for bringing divide in the society so how can it be good so that is why these are the issues in international funding now let us see some past year questions and practice questions right so corporate social responsibility make companies more profitable and sustainable analyze so the thing is that you have to analyze this so you have to write the positives and negatives negatives in the sense that what are the issues related to it so how can you start your answer you can start your answer by citing that corporate social responsibility is a legally is legally binding in india with companies with so and so profit have to contribute 2% of their profits in the social sectors right this is will be your introduction then you can write how it makes companies more profitable and sustainable right so in that you can write corporate social responsibility brings trust towards the companies it enhances their customer base and thus it brings profitable that it makes the company profitable it it gives you more return on your investment and it makes it sustainable also because in situations where the company is not doing good when there are some negative news related to company 
then people trust the company because of the good work which was done in corporate social responsibility right then you can write however corporate social responsibility is used by many companies against the principles of corporate governance so you have to include these terms like corporate governance so that your answer looks more ethical your answer looks more technical and in that case and after that you can highlight two or three instances two or three ways in which corporate social responsibility is misused for example the notebook example which i gave you then the second example can be there is no diversification of funds the funds are all the companies are investing in certain sectors for example education and health there is no funding for rural sector right so agricultural sector the funding is very less it makes the reach of the corporate it makes the reach of the company through corporate social responsibility very narrow and and thus it leads to less profit and sustainability and then after that you can write your conclusion right this is just 150 word answer so uh, then you can write your conclusion that how it can follow the framework of uh, corporate governance how can it follow the principles of corporate governance and can enhance the uh, profitability and sustainability through corporate social responsibility for the company right so this will be your holistic answer now the second question is uh, so this is an easy question i think this is a very easy question and it is a direct question and you can write few examples potential conflict of interest versus actual uh, conflict of interest it is about something which is going to happen and this is about something which is at hand right these two questions you have to attempt and submit me your answers and after that we will discuss these questions okay so that's it for this and uh, it was i think explained very thoroughly if you don't understand anything listen to my lecture again and if you have any doubt you can ask me thank you everyone for watching the discussion and i hope it is clear and do submit your answers because you will benefit only when you write and get regular feedback also do subscribe the youtube channel and join wordsmith telegram groups for regular update case studies and example stay focused work hard and enjoy